1 Corinthians chapter number 15. This is one of those chapters that has so much preaching in it. But we're going to focus on the end of the chapter. Begin reading verse 51. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible should have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for being a great God. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for the blessed hope we have in Christ. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us for the next few minutes. Lord, your people have faced adversity these days. They faced it on the job. They faced it in their communities. Some have even faced it in their homes. But they found themselves in the house of God this morning. So, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd help them. You'd encourage them. You'd edify them. You'd strengthen them. God, you just blow through here as a breath of fresh air, and God, you would speak peace to their troubled souls. God, we pray that, God, you'd give victory to somebody who is, Lord, faced with adversity. Maybe there's somebody here today lost without God. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Father, whatever the need is of the heart, I pray that every heart will do business with Almighty God. Uh, God, you know what we stand in need of. So, Father, help us use this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name now. And, Father, we'll not fail to bless you and praise you for all that you do. Thank you for being such a good God. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Uh, amen and amen. Here the Apostle Paul writing this epistle to the church at Corinth. Uh, He's just about to conclude the letter, Brother Ray, uh, and he starts deliberating on a few things. Uh, first of all, he's de deliberating on a mystery. We find in verse 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, we shall not all die. He says, Some of us aren't going to die. What a blessing. I'm, I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking and listening for the trumpet. Right. Hey, some of us are going to go to glory and escape death. What a blessing uh, that will be. He said, now, we're not all going to sleep, uh, but we shall all be changed. Uh, aren't you glad uh, when the trumpet blows, whether in the grave or alive, uh, we're all going to be changed? Uh, we're no longer going to need these old frail bodies. Uh, we're going to get a body fashioned like the Son of God. Uh, he said it's going to happen in a moment, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, at the last trump. Uh, can I say that last trump does not mean the final trump, uh, but the end of a time or end of a period uh, be the end of the grace age. Uh, that trumpet's going to blow, uh, and in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, before you can blink your eye, uh, we're going to be changed. Uh, we're going to be taken out of here. Uh, we're going to be with the Lord forevermore. What a blessing. That's a mystery to this world. Uh, but to us that are saved... Uh, who've experienced the miracle of salvation, uh, we realize it isn't that big of a deal for God. He can do whatever He wants to do. Hey, the grave couldn't hold Him, and it won't hold us. What a blessing. So He deals with a mystery. He also deliberates on mortality. Look at this, verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Say, why, preacher? Because the Lord told Moses no flesh can see him and live. But we're going to dwell with him. We're going to go live with him so we can't stay in these uh, 
mortal states. Uh, 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 we can't stay in this corrupt state. Uh, we got to put on incorruption. Uh, we got to put on immortality. Uh, that's why he's going to change us uh, and make us just like him so we can be with him forevermore. Uh, so he deliberates on a mystery. He deliberates on mortality and then he deliberates on the, the measure of the whole thing. He starts to evaluate the whole thing. Look what he says in verse 54. He says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass uh, the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You find that in Isaiah 25 and 8. But then he goes on to say, O death, where's thy sting? O grave, where's thy victory? It says, uh, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. He's deliberating on this whole measure of things. He's evaluating. He says, listen, when we put on incorruption and immortality, uh, death's going to give away to victory. And then he goes on to say, the sting of death will be taken away. And the Bible makes it clear the king of terrors is death. Nobody signs up for death today. Even though we know the day we took our first breath, death got on our trail. We all know we're going to die, Brother Rom. We just don't think we're going to die today. But I got good news. Christians don't die like sinners. Sinners die and then go to hell. Death is the best thing uh, that they'll face. After death, mm, there is a sting of death for them, but not for Christians. Amen. We don't go to, mm, to the grave worried about what's on the other side. Amen. Christians just go to sleep. The sting of death has been removed. Amen. We have nothing to fear right. because con uh, the Lord Jesus conquered death. Amen. We don't fear the grave. We've got victory over the grave because he defeated death, hell, and the grave. What a blessing to know that. Those of you that have lowered loved ones down into the earth uh, in a casket, uh, uh, if they're saved, you know that uh, uh, they're coming up out of there one of these days. And what a blessing. And then he goes on to say, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, in conclusion of all this stuff, in conclusion of the fact we've got a mystery, in conclusion of the fact that we're going to put on immortality, in conclusion of the fact that death is swallowed up in victory and there is no more sting of death, he says, thanks be to God. Amen. He said, what a hope we have. Right. He stops in the middle of all that. He just says, thank you, Lord. <laughs> hey, huh. We ought to thank the Lord. Right, we don't have to worry about tomorrow. Right, we don't have to worry about death. Right. We don't have to worry about uh, what all's going to transpire. Uh, we know He's got it all under control. Uh, right. With His help, I want to preach on thank you, Lord. Uh, hey, uh, we ought to just uh, throw up hands toward heaven and say, Thank you, Lord. Uh, don't have to worry about death. Uh, don't have to worry about my future. Uh, don't have to worry about anything. Because uh, I belong to him. Uh, I'm in him. Uh, and he's in me. Uh, and because death couldn't keep him, uh, it won't keep me. Uh, hey, just thank you, Lord, uh, that we don't have to fret over any of that. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, we have those assurances today. Uh, hey, uh, thank you, Lord. Even though we lost an hour of sleep, we still get to come out and worship you. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Uh, I got to thinking about how we ought to thank him and what we ought to thank him for. Uh, we ought to thank him for the plan uh, that he devised. Uh, only God uh, would set in motion a plan uh, like God did. Uh, listen, uh, he uh, uh, planned creation. Uh, hey, uh, God spoke everything in existence. Uh, took nothing and made everything. Uh, 
And when he looked at what he made, he said, it's good. And then he reached down in the dust of the earth and he formed a man fashioned like himself and he breathed in man the breath of life and man became a living soul and he created everything. What a blessing that God devised this great plan. Can I say, then he made man and he gave man in his creative design a choice. What a God. He didn't make a bunch of robots, but he gave us a choice. And man made a poor choice. Man chose to disobey God. And sin entered this world. And death by sin. And death passed upon all men. God gave us a creative a creation. Then he gave us a choice. But in his great plan, he made a way where he had a coat and a covering for their sin uh, and their nakedness uh, in God's great plan. Uh, he didn't throw them away when they made a poor choice, uh, but he came down to the garden like he always did, uh, and he sought them out. Uh, and I'm glad, hallelujah, uh, third Saturday night of March in 1974, uh, he came to where I was, uh, and he sought me out, uh, and he had a covering for my sin. Uh, Oh, what a Savior. Uh, oh, thank you, Lord, uh, oh, for the plan that he devised. Uh, hey, uh, not only did he have a coat and a covering, uh, then in his great plan he gave us the commandments uh, so we'd know what it was to sin. Uh, uh, the commandment of law became our schoolmaster. Uh, we're not walking around blind, uh, not knowing what God thinks, uh, but he gave us his word so we know exactly what he thinks. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for the word. Uh, hey, uh, then in his plan that he devised, uh, he gave us Christ. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, he didn't send an angel. Uh, he didn't send an elder. Uh, he sent Christ, his own darling son. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, that who's ever believing in him should not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, I say thank you, Lord, for Christ. Uh, uh, who came uh, and bled and died uh, and paid our sin debt. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, uh, for Christ. Uh, thank you for Mount Calvary, uh, hey, uh, where he took my place uh, and your place, uh, that you and I uh, could have a place with him. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for the church. Uh, what a blessing uh, that he gave us the church. Uh, Hey, he loved the church and gave himself for it. Uh, and he grafted in the true vine of Israel branch, uh, the church. Uh, what a blessing uh, uh, to be a part of the Lord's church. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, and thank you, Lord, for his coming. What a plan he devised. Uh, he's coming back for us. Uh, and it could be any day. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for the plan he devised. Uh, I thank God. Uh, for the plan he devised. Uh, and I say thank you, Lord, for the pardon he offers. Uh, hey, he gave us a pardon to expunge uh, our record. Hey, we had a record, and it wasn't a good one. Hey, our record showed every sin uh, we'd ever committed. Uh, and listen, our record was long, uh, and our record was so impact and so uh, uh, hurtful. Uh, all we could do uh, when it was brought up is say guilty. Uh, guilty. Uh, we were guilty of all the sin. Uh, but I'm glad. Uh, hey, uh, the Lord, uh, he gave us a pardon uh, uh, to expunge our record. Uh, Colossians 2.13 says, And you, uh, being dead in your sins uh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, uh, hath he quickened or made alive uh, together with him uh, having forgiven you all trespasses uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us uh, and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross uh, hey he expunged our record uh, oh thank you lord for the pardon he offers uh, i was guilty uh, i deserve the punishment uh, but I ain't facing a punishment uh, because he expunged my record. Uh, he washed me in his own blood. Expunged my record. 
Oh, thank you, Lord, for the pardon he offers. It's a pardon expunge our record. Is it a pardon for me to escape damnation? I was headed to hell. Deserve to go to hell. Ought to be in hell today. But I'm not going. Because I got a pardon. My uh, record now says not guilty. My record says clean. Uh, my record says justified. Uh, as if he never sinned. Uh, I'm not going to hell. Uh, because the pardon I received. Uh, whoa, Matthew 25, 46 it says, And these shall go away to everlasting punishment. That was me. The verse didn't stop there. There's a little conjunction. It said, but the righteous unto life eternal. <laughs> oh, uh, I got the mystery. I get the mortality. I get it all because uh, of the pardon I received uh, some 48 years ago. Can I say the pardon he offers was a pardon to give me eternal life. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Uh, I say thank you, Lord, for the plan he devised. Thank you, Lord, for the pardon he offers. I thought about this. Thank you, Lord, for the placement he confers. You see, when he pardoned me, he didn't leave me where he found me. He not only saved me, he changed me, but he placed me somewhere. Say, where did he place you? Well, he placed me in the body. A body of baptized believers. Hey, he placed me in the beloved. Uh, he placed me in his bride. What a blessing to be a part of the bride of Christ. Uh, hey, we're going to a wedding someday. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, we'll be married to God forevermore. Uh, what a blessing where he placed me. Uh, uh, the world don't think much of us. But the Lord thought so much of us, He gave Himself for us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the placement He confers. Huh? You realize outside of the Lord Jesus, most of us would have never met one another. And if we would, we wouldn't have liked one another. But because He lives in me, and because He lives in you, and because He fitly framed us together, we not only get along, we love one another. We enjoy being around one another. And we're going to spend all of eternity with one another. Only God could place us the way he did. Uh, thank you, Lord. I got to thinking about the Lord. And Paul's saying, thanks be unto God. Can I say this? Thank you, Lord, for the provisions he grants. Uh, can I say, he supplies every need. I read something this week where this is the worst inflation, inflation we've had in 40 years. Well, I remember when it was worse than this. And can I say, he supplied every need then, and he'll supply every need now. Uh, you may not be eating filet mignon, you might be eating fried bologna, but it still tastes good. Are you listening? He supplies every need. Are you listening? Every need supply. Uh, he promised to meet our needs according to His Son, Jesus Christ. I've got the good news for you. Every need supplied. There and anybody in here can't say God didn't meet your needs. Because He has. And then He meets many of our wants. Uh, I say thank you, Lord, for the provision He grants. He don't have to meet our needs. But He promised to, so He will. Uh can I say this? He provides scriptures for faith and for light. Amen. A lot of times in this world you can't make sense of things, but you can go to the Word of God. And the entrance of His Word brings light and understanding. Can I say it increases your faith? It'll strengthen your inner man. Where would we be without the scriptures today? Uh, it's one of the great provisions of God. Uh, listen, I've heard of soldiers fighting in wars and get a love letter from their sweetheart at home and carry that with them into the battle and that love letter get them through that horrible conquest of war I've got good news for you we got a love letter from home 
Uh, and we may face some battles. <laughs> oh, but what love we get from this book uh, that'll help us until we get home. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the provisions. He's granted. I think about the fact he provides serenity for every storm. Every conflict, every tragedy, every trial, every storm, you never face them alone. He's right there and gives you sweet peace for every storm. Thank you, Lord, for the provisions he grants. Then I thought about this. Thank you, Lord, for the protection he affords. Hmm. Can I say, he gives us protection from his hand. Matter of fact, he said, I'm in his hand, and his hand's in the Father's hand, and no man can pluck me out of the Father's hand. Uh, good luck, devil, get me out of that. Hmm? Isaiah says we're engraved in the palm of his hand. Uh, oh, what protection we have in the Father's hand. Can I say this? He not only gives us protection from his hand, but he gives us protection behind the hedge. He hedges us in. And nothing can break the hedge unless it gets permission. What a blessing to be hedged in by God. You know, it's not a bad thing not understanding everything this world has to offer because you've been hedged in into the safety of God. Hmm? There's a lot of things I wonder about. I wonder about what's going on behind the scenes and all that kind of But really it don't matter because I'm hedged in by God. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your protection. And can I say his protection is found in his hand and we're protected behind a hedge. But our protection is backed up by all of heaven. You know, he's got a guardian angel watching over you. But if he has to, he can dispatch every angel in heaven to take care of you. Are you listening? Everything promised from heaven is backed up by heaven. And friends, you don't have anything to worry about. God's going to protect you. Huh? Hmm? I say, thank you, Lord. There are days I don't even know how to take care of myself. But he does. Uh, oh, what a Savior. Hmm? Uh, some of you got home security systems. The Lord's better than that. Uh, some of you got your your cars got a security system. The Lord's better than that. But He's more concerned about your heart than He is your home or your car. And oh, what a Savior He is! That He's willing to protect even your heart. Thank you, Lord. We got thinking about all that stuff. How we ought to be thankful, Brother Bob. But it's one thing, Brother Doug, to be thankful. It's one thing to say thank you. By the way, that's one of my wife's biggest pet peeves. If she does something, nobody says thank you. But it's one thing to say thank you. It's another thing to prove that you're thankful. And if you're truly thankful for what God's done for you, then verse 58 applies. Look what it says. Therefore, because I'm thankful, because I have this mystery and this mortality and, and I've given thought to death swallowed up in victory and I thank the Lord for all that He has revealed unto me and that will transpire. He says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. One thing ought to be found of you, that you're as faithful to God as He is to you. Amen. Good. Be steadfast, unmovable. Yep. It means you don't waver. Right. Hmm? I watched when they was building this bridge out here. They drove these big pylons down, and then they poured them big concrete pylons right there. And can I say, they tested them test them and test them them pylons aren't going to give way that ought to be what we are we ought to be so anchored into the things of God we're just unmovable right. say well the world's going this way let them right. yeah. I'm staying right here in the pages of this book 
I'm going to stay right where God planted me. I'm going to be unmovable. The only thing that's going to get me out of where I am is when he, he blows the trumpet. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. You ought to always be involved and abound in it. You ought to embrace it. You ought to rub the work of the Lord all over you like you rub a bath towel on you when you get out of the shower. You just ought to be all in in the things of God. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen. You know why I don't want to miss church? Because somewhere, sometime, when that trumpet blows, somebody's going to be in church. And if it happens on a Sunday morning, I don't want to have to go meet the Lord not being in church. Hmm? And that's true. I don't know if you heard. I don't really care. I used to care. I don't care. Major League Baseball settled their strike or whatever it was. But I used to go down to some of them games. Now I don't go if I get freebies. I ain't paying to go down there and watch all that mess, you know. I'm not paying all them spoiled brats who won't work a regular job, you know what I'm saying? I ain't doing it. And then complain because they're only getting $40 million over the next year and a half, you know. They can't live on that. Uh, I ain't paying for all that mess. But if you give me freebies, I'll go. I like the hot dogs. I do. And the peanuts. Uh, I like making fun of all the weird people. But anyway. If I'm going. Heaven help if I'm not on the end. But normally I'm on the end. But guarantee you. If I'm on the end. Somebody in the middle over there is going to order a beer. I ain't never drank a beer. And I'm not going to pass the beer. If a vendor comes down and that guy wants a beer and this vendor, that vendor's going to have to get it to him without my assistance. Say, why, are you too good to handle beer? Well, I'm not too good for anything. But I don't want the trumpet to blow me meet the Lord with a beer in my hand. You know what I'm saying? I want to always abound in the work of the Lord. You see, we aren't always in church but we are always Christian we're not always assembled but we're always part of the body are you listening so we ought to be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work how long has it been since you just took time to thank him and know why you're thanking him huh how long has it been since you told him you loved him because he first loved you? When's the last time you went and sought him because of the day that he came seeking you? When's the last time you got your mind off of this world and you got your mind on today could be the day when I put on immortality? See, you get to thinking like that, and you'll be steadfast. You get to thinking like that, and all of a sudden, the allurements of this world lose their attraction. And the allurements of the heavenly world start getting brighter and brighter. I wonder, when's the last time you just stopped and said, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me? Well, what a Savior! He is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise if he never blessed us again. He is worthy. Will you give him the praise? Do his name. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation while he's picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. It's not a big enough phrase to shower on you for what we feel in our heart. But oh Lord, how we love you. We thank you for being so good to us. Now Father, I don't know what people need this morning, but you do. So speak to hearts. God, I fear in a crowd decided there may be some not ready to meet you. 
God, I pray today to be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for your children. God, I pray you'd help them. This whole world has gone south in a hurry. God, we're not of the world, but we do live in it. We do have to face things. So God, strengthen your people. Bless them real good, God. And God, help your people to bless you back by being thankful. Have your way in this invitation now, Father. Get glory to your name. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.